All right. Hello, everybody. Hi, Apparition. Hi, OA. Hi, Jichan. Woo! You caught up! Oh my god, I'm so happy. <laughs> I hope you didn't spend too much time watching all those. I guess you could listen in the background, but oh wow, it's so great to have you here. Have everybody here, by the way. <laughs> anyway, now <sighs> Team Michelle is almost fully assembled. We have at our dinner table a very serious looking Mel. We have Yukimasa. And we have the big mob boss himself, Yakupo. So now, all that remains is that we somehow, some way, got Yukimasa on our team. And now the only thing remains is to get Yakupo. And what, so, but uh, something tells me. <laughs> Hello, uh, Fatimoru. Welcome to the stream. I haven't seen you here before. <laughs> so now let's see. I, I have a feeling that even if we do convince Jacopo, it won't be so simple. Because what did destroy the village if it wasn't any kind of like magical thing? There's got to be something else going on. Let's get back into it. <laughs> I came because you, had, you said you had something important to discuss. No. Care to tell me who the hell this white-haired man is, and what he's doing here. You neglected to mention we'd be having company. I'm the one who asked him to arrange this meeting with you. And who the hell would you be? He's an angel. Or a prophet. What? Did you both finally snap under the pressure? I'll leave it for you to decide what you think I am. I will say, though, that I know everything. Hello, Lambda Delta. Welcome to the stream. I know you've got a girl imprisoned in the observation tower, and I know you're taking her blood and calling it medicine, passing it out at the church. Which one of you squealed? No one told him anything. He just knew. He knows everything, including my deepest desires and what happens in my next life. My god, Yukimasa is like, has gone full on Team Michelle. Holy fuck. <laughs> Source! Oh my god! <laughs> Welcome, Soars. He's probably peering into your soul this very moment. <laughs> You've completely lost it, I see. Well, how you got your information doesn't matter. All I need to know is this. What are you hoping to gain from me? Wealth? My downfall? What? Morgana's freedom! I want you to give me your key, and then I want you to tell me your story. I've come here from the future, from the world after Morgana's death. Her soul courses with hatred for the three of you. And she's placed a curse of eternal suffering on your souls. Yeah, the music is loud. My god. Holy shit, how did it get that loud? Thanks for telling me. Okay, sure. Okay, Soros. Thanks for telling me. 
Has everyone in this goddamn table gone mad? Did you all seriously think I would believe that nonsense? Don't interrupt me. Woo, Michelle! My objective is not so much to rescue Morgana's physical body from the tower, but to save her soul from an eternity of loathing. I can't achieve that on my own, however. Because I am not from this time, I've had no direct interaction with her or anyone else here just, until just recently. In order to make her have a change of heart, I need to gather the truth from the people who are from this time. And I suspect that you hold the last piece of the puzzle. The biggest piece. That you have a far deeper connection with Morgana than anyone else here. No. I'm all but certain of it now. Your perspective is crucial to accomplishing my goal. Tell me your whole story. Please, how you ended up capturing and imprisoning Morgana. What you thought and felt along the way. Your truth will get through to her. I know it. That will be the turning point in all of this. Her curse will be no more. And you will all be returned to the paths you were meant to walk. Everyone will have their salvation. <laughs> Someone throw this madman out of here. I won't do it. Neither will I. Damn worthless cuz! I'll call the gods then. Who do you think I am exactly? I am the lord of this land. Under ordinary circumstances, I'd never so much as deign to speak with you, lowly peasant. Now get out of my sight. Or I'll take it as an act of aggression, and you'll find yourself without a head. In this room, right now, you're not a lord. You're a lone man. Until you hand over the key, your key, we're not letting you leave. And you'll find there aren't any guards for you to call. You all, you're all alone on this estate. Your preoccupation with staying out of sight played right into our hands. I love how we got these two on board. Seriously. Accept your defeat, Lord. We've already agreed to set the witch free. Cowardly worms. Ironic, coming from you. Huh. I didn't think you would toy coke quite so eagerly. The nun and your kid sister are in, it on, it, in on it too, I take it. We were only working for you. We never felt any sort of allegiance to you. And <laughs> loyalty founded on what one has to gain or lose is far more resilient than unsweetened, fluctuating feelings. But it would appear this white haired man shattered that foundation. <laughs> How long have you been colluding with them, Kerr? I arrived in this era. Two days ago. What? Two days? Yes, I'm that badass. Together with my comrades, we are invincible. We are working together. Oh, come on. You're not going to say it seriously. I really thought you were going to say it that time. No, I'm not going to say it for the last time. In just two days, you got these worms dancing for you. They are not dancing for me. I merely spoke with them, and they listened. You're a disturbed man. You couldn't possibly have won these two over in a mere two days. He's no ordinary man. As we've said, he knew everything. 
while I was talking to him. It felt like he was looking directly into my soul. He's definitely an unusual one. Yeah. He felt like he's known me my whole life. Even though he just showed up out of nowhere two days ago. I didn't believe what he was saying at first. But he knew things I, he couldn't possibly know. My secret wish. Something I've never told anyone before. I don't know what kind of tricks you're playing. But now I know why I've never seen you around. If you'd been lurking around the city for longer, sticking your nose where it didn't belong, I would have taken notice sooner or later. <laughs> I'm impressed. In only two days, you managed to convince them both to betray me and set me up. I am indeed the one in charge of this operation. So if it's the witch you're after, I'm the obvious target. Yes. And the two dogs there surely have some pent up rage. So I take it you're gonna tie me up and then torture me until I tell you I tell you what you wanna know. Oh come on, Yukimasa, no! No! Bad! We need Pauline in here to just spray him with water every time he, he starts to do this. She'll be like, bad! Bad! Bad, Yukimasa! No! No! Bad, bad boy! Stop that! Okay, fine. Just don't spray me again. Like... <laughs> That's not a bad idea. What do you say? Give me the word and he's in ropes. Wait, wait. We agreed we were getting rough. Damn it, I really wanted to. I have no interest in solving this problem with violence. We are here to uncover the truth. We didn't ex exchange blows. Only words. Yes, Nanako, Nanako says, No more fighting! It's like, <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, if we were going to beat it out of him, we would have done it, done it as soon as he walked in through the door. I mean, seriously, no point in wasting time with this charade. We discussed this beforehand. We're only talking. This visual novel doesn't have the budget for a fight scene. No one's getting into any fights. Physically or verbally. That's right. Well, it looks like I've got no way out. So, you got me. I surrender. Take my key. Go open the tower doors. What? Well, that was easier than expected. Your key is not important right now. Your perspective is what I seek. Why did you make it so the lock required three keys? One person is more than adequate for the job. So why split it three ways? Is that any of your concern, Kerr? Was it because it was too much weight to bear alone? You didn't actually want to imprison Morgana, did you? Something, somewhere, went wrong. You backed yourself into a corner and couldn't escape. I'm done listening to you. Am I right, or am I wrong? Lord. Or should I say, Jacopo? Jacopo? But isn't his name, um, Jean-Francois Bonnier? Jean-Francois Bonnier? That's Lord Bonnier to you, you insolent child! You seem to be a bit confused. 
I am the son of House of Bonnier, which means I'm royalty. Hello, David Lohman. Welcome to the stream. No, you are not. I don't know how you came to start calling yourself Bonnier, but there's not a drop of royal blood flowing through your veins. Uh, I am just fine, Ji Chun. They actually recently installed uh, some insulation where I'm living, so it's a lot um, it's a lot cozier than it would be normally. The slave revolt at the Lord's Manor seven years ago. You were there, weren't you? During the revolt, you helped Morgana escape. That's right. You saved her life once. That was you. You were the slave from seven years ago. Jacopo! Da 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 Seriously, like... And then, like, you hear the sound effect, and, like, Jacopo's sprite would go, like, backwards, and then, like, you know, he'd panic a bit, and then, you know, regain his composure, and he's like, <laughs> Oh, no, Michelle is totally Edgeworth. He, he is totally Edgeworth. In every possible aspect of his personality, except for the fact that he's actually romantic, unlike Edgeworth, who is pretty asexual, I would say. He was even, like, he even said that at the end of, um, fucking Spirit of Justice. Slave. Are you out of your goddamn mind? Me, a slave. Like hell, a former slave could become royalty. You did it, though. You went from slave to lord. Enough. I don't know who's filling that white-haired head of yours with this drivel, but I'm done listening to it. Say another word, and I'll throttle you myself. Keep slandering my name, I dare you! Mario told me the slave from back then was dead. I fucking knew it. No, no, I think I realized it. I just realized it based on what Michelle said. I fucking knew it. Oh my god. I am not amazing. I just... It's... <laughs> I'm sure that's it. Y'all are way too nice to me. She didn't mean it literally, though. My god, we are... Wow. More Umineko stuff here. She meant he wasn't who he used to be anymore. Maria, you've been talking to her too. Because she was afraid if Morgana found out. It would only serve to throw her deeper into despair. The man who had once saved her was now responsible for keeping her imprisoned. Do your ears not work, Kerr? I said I've had enough! I need your perspective. There's more to this story. I'm certain of it. Oh, you got that right, Michelle. Come on. Go to Michelle. Oh, God, another witch. And no, I will not say it. I refuse to believe you acted only for your own benefit. Only to cause her pain. If you want the key so damn badly, then take it. Set the witch free. I don't give a damn. But if you still ain't say another word, I'll rip your fucking tongue out. Again, the key is not what I need right now. I need your story. Are you deaf or just an imbecile? Your perspective is crucial to saving Morgana's soul. 
Enough! When you were a slave, you helped Morgana escape from the Lord. Silence! And you spent the next three years with her! Just one more fucking word! I swear to God! So how did you end up here? How did the boy from seven years ago go from saving her to locking her up and stealing her blood? There's no excusing your actions, no. But please, I need you to tell, to tell me how you got this to this point! ENOUGH! Michelle! <sighs> the next thing I see... is a dagger in his hand, pointed at me. I re oh wow, another dagger. I reflexively try to push myself out of the path of his charge with my dominant hand, which sends a jolt of excruciating pain at my right arm. <laughs> I'll wrap your fucking head up! The Lord swings his arm up, and the necklace spills from my pocket, making a metallic click as it hits the floor. When he sees it, his eyes goes w go wide for a brief moment. Of course, I'm just as slack-jawed as him. What? What the hell? It's going on! Why? How? Why am I looking at? Why am I looking at a familiar cloud of inky black darkness? Uh oh! Oh no! You were so close! What necklace? What's going on? Oh god. There's no one to answer my question though. And no time to think about it either. I have to make a decision right now. Oh god, another choice! The Lord, dagger raised is quickly approaching. Off to the side, the cloud of darkness is expanding. I. There we go. Oh, I did. Oh my god! Okay, darkness time! Hello, Nana, welcome to the stream. That's right, Michelle, reach out for the truth. I reach my hand to the darkness spreading for the necklace, and as soon as I do. What, what the hell is this? stuff oh boy we are okay let's see the blackness swells consuming us all where are we going no stop what what is this don't don't make me what's this oh my god oh wow we okay we're gonna see his flashback he shout his shouts fade into the distance and my mind and body are swallowed up entirely Oh god, oh boy, magic shit is happening. It's the same th thing as that happens when, whenever Giselle and I open a door. Yeah, that's right. I am the shadow, the true self. I, damn it, I can't do that echo effect with that. Uh, you know what, let me try. I am the shadow, the true self. Damn it. I can't do it, sorry. I get, that that only works when I do it with it with the Carapoyo voice. <laughs> when I try to add that effect to to my when it, when I'm speaking. The same darkness I gazed into again and again. Again and again in that cursed mansion. That house that exists outside reality. Far, far off in the distance I can see a gentle light, like a hole ripped out in the darkness. 
Green grass and colorful flowers rustling in the wind. I don't understand. The darkness. It was never present in the past. It was, I thought, a phenomenon restricted to the realm of the dead. So what is it doing here? But even my questions are, in short order, swallowed up by the void. Soon my body ceases to retain its form, leaving only my consciousness to view the sight, sound, and emotions of someone's past. I become an observer. Okay. Yakupo won't tell his story. So, I think Morgana's helping us out here. I become, or Giselle, maybe. Maybe it's Giselle helping us out from her side. I become, an, I become an observer, as I have many times before. I'm staring into a pair of ruby red eyes, open wide with shock. I recall snapping at him, insulting him. But I don't remember what I said. Nor do I remember how he responded. All I know is that a wave of churning blackness appeared out of nowhere, washing me away. I'm powerless, helpless, hopeless. My young mind sucked into it like a whirlpool. Young? My young mind? Oh, for Christ's sake. You have got to be kidding me. Why? By the love of God, why am I being made to look back at this part of my life? The miserable, stupid, fucking romantic I once was. Is this Jacopo? Yeah, this is Jacopo, I think. Why am I turning back into the boy I tried so hard to forget? Where did this absurd black smoke come from? And why can't I get out of it? Yep, yeah, okay, it's Jacopo. If it's the white-haired man who's doing this to me. Then he's not an angel or a prophet. He's the goddamn devil himself. But all my questions, my confusion, my frustration. Everything that composes my present is superseded by that darkness. Wisping away into nothing. Oh my god! Oh my god, did you see that? That was... Jacopo was a slave being kind to Morgana. Oh my god. Oh my god. To be blunt, the world is a small place. There is an unimaginable amount of it out there. But you only ever get to see a minuscule fraction of it. And that goes doubly for us. The poor barely get the chance to see any of it at all. And those who were born into affluence... Well, they have no idea just how small our world really is. I never yearned for the world outside of what I know. I more coveted it. A splash of spite mixed in. I wanted to claw my way up the mountain, knock all the bastards down who had never seen what it was like at the bottom. If I made it high enough, I could do anything. I would have complete freedom. If that sounds like a childish fantasy to you, well, you'd be right. That's exactly what it was. There you are. You spent so much time in the graveyard that one of these days, someone's going to think you're a gravekeeper. Or maybe a grave robber. I can understand the gravekeeper, but I take offense at the suggestion I look like a grave robber. I'm praying for the souls with no one to see them all. The Goyle, named Morgana, turned around to face me. Though I'd known her for some time, I'd rarely ever looked into her eyes. Her face was almost always concealed by a dark hood, 
revealing only the tip of her nose and sometimes her lips. Honestly, I don't get it. Why do you care so much? These are the souls that have no one else to pray for them. At best, they may get a bit of lip service from a priest once or twice. It's our responsibility to offer a helping hand to the sick and the poor, to pray for their abandoned souls. What I don't get is why you need to pray for the dead at all. They're just bags of bones. I hope you enjoyed eternity in hell, blasphemer. Hey! That was uncalled for! I'm just joking, obviously. You take black humor to a new level! Oh, you don't know me very well, do you? Morgana gave me a... Morgana gave me a coy shrug, then turned away. She never faced anyone that on for very long, and she had a perfectly good reason for it. It wasn't because she disliked me or anything. I don't think, anyway. About three years earlier, something had happened that caused large patches of flesh to fall off her face. Supposedly, she had looked fine before then, but I only knew her as she was at the time. The rest of her body was covered in wounds as well, but applying ointment to them had reduced the scar insignificantly. Her face, though, showed no signs of recovering. A close friend of mine, a prostitute, said she thought it might be a psychological thing, but regardless... I continued applying the ointment to Morgana's face. Hey, come on! Don't turn away from me! Uh, I know you can hear me. I brought ointment, so let me put it on you. It's a waste of time. You don't know that. Your arms look much better than before. It won't be long before your face starts healing too. My god, why did he change to doing the exact opposite? Oh god. Yakupo, why did you stop? Seriously. <sighs> the ointment isn't free. You're wasting your money. It's my money. I can use it however I please. So just shut up and let me do this. You're a very obnoxious man. You know. <laughs> what was that? You want me to rub it in real hard, huh? Fine. With a forlorn graveyard as the backdrop. Oh, okay. So this narration is just third person narration. Okay. Oh my god. With a forlorn graveyard as their backdrop, a young man applied salve to a girl's raw, exposed flesh. It was quite possibly the least romantic sight in the world. I would have, at the very least, preferred a some more, somewhere, somewhat more pleasant location. Okay, now, okay, now it's okay. As the thought flooded through my mind, I let out a defeated laugh, and I could soon feel a glaring at me. Uh, Morgana could be a bit standoffish, but honestly, I don't mind. I like the Sundere thing. For her, this was actually quite sociable, in fact. When I first met her, she didn't act a rage at all, but no. She was starting to show signs of the 12-year-old girl hidden inside. Three years prior, when I met Morgana, she had been the victim of unspeakable abuse at the hands of the Lord. Oh my god! Morgana didn't even realize that the Lord's changed! Oh god. But why did he continue doing that? Oh god. I didn't know why he had done those things to her. And I didn't ask either. 
Because I knew doing so would only reopen old wounds. All I knew was that the Lord was so far gone as a human being as to brutally torture a nine-year-old girl. At the time, the only thing that ever seemed to come out of her mouth was the word of God. Everything she said or did was ostensibly for the benefit of others. But it felt more to me like she was acting out of some sorts of sense of duty rather than genuine concern. Honorable, but ultimately hollow. I much, much preferred this Morgana. Even if she could be a bit... jaded. What are you hoping to get out of repairing my face? I'm not trying to get anything. I just want you to heal up. That's true. Oh my god. I bet Morgana might try to find that as a loophole, David Loman. Like the, the original Lord. But I suppose Michelle could also spin it that Jacopo avenged her. What if Jacopo killed the original Lord? <laughs> My biggest question is why did he continue doing it? And here I thought you were trying to, to going to try and make me work at the brothel. How many times do I have to tell you? I'm not going to make you be a prostitute. What other reason could you have for wanting my face to get better? Because I want to see it. Isn't that enough? Uh, just so we're clear, uh, th that wasn't me hitting on you, okay? Baka? The thought never occurred to me, until you just said it. Yeah, where is Giselle? Oh, God. She fell quiet, sitting there mo- Oh, she fell quiet, sitting there motionless as I rubbed ointment into her face. The skin beneath my thumb was rough and unpleasant to the touch. And honestly, where the stomach toyed it. It was hard to imagine a face would ever heal. What I'd said about wanting to see a face was true. Well, what I wanted more than anything was for her to be able to live a relatively normal life. <laughs> and then Nana... I'm gonna read Nana's comments like Michelle is going, What's a Baka? It's like Giselle from wherever she is is like, ah! I wanna tell her, but I can't because I'm in the void. Oh god. I, I really want Giselle to come back. Oh god. I hope you're prepared. I hope you're prepared to be let down if I ever do heal. And that possibility is just part of the fun. Ah, oh, you are as much tact as a worm. <laughs> no tact and bad taste. I'm a real winner. My god. This is real Battler and Beatrice energy here. It's a wonder no one throttles you in your sleep. Being the guy, of course. I would have been pleased if she turned out pretty with a face healed. But her life was guaranteed to be easier than now, no matter what she looked like. That was what really mattered, ultimately. What happened to you, Jacopo? How did you turn from this? I could only imagine how hard it was to have your life turned completely upside down at the age of nine.
a large portion of us in the slums had our share of misfortune. But hardly any of them stacked up to what Morgana had to bear. She had no parents. When I'd asked her about her mother, she'd gotten cagey with me, so I assumed she'd been sold off. When I'd asked about her father, though, she'd just point up at the sky. Which I took to mean he was dead. Oh, God. Oh, God. A young girl, no family, sent off all on her own to some strange land. Somewhere along the line ended up in the Lord's cruel grasp. Misfortune felt like an understatement, if anything. Not that it wasn't just out of pity that I gave Morgana so much of my attention. The other reason, though? Well, she'd probably go running if I told her. Hell, I wanted to hit myself over the head. I'll still be your friend, even if you turn out to be the ugliest girl in the city. You should be grateful. How is it you haven't managed to chase off everyone in your life yet? I act like a decent guy around other people. Do my best to fit in. Then why are you such a dolt around me? I'm just doing my best to fit in. <laughs> my god! Seriously, these two! Damn! These two! My god! Wow! Oh my god! So you're saying this is my fault? Everyone could use a thorn or two. Makes them more rich, exciting. You especially. Okay, that should be everything. Does it sting anywhere? Oh, not particularly, no. Alright. Oh. Also, finish up here and get back to Maria soon. Unless you'd rather I drag you there. Why? Seriously? It's your damn birthday, that's why. And? What do you think, Demwit? She wants to celebrate! Get back there soon, okay? I'm planning to drop by too. Oh my god. Oh my god! Oh my god! This is not fair! What happened to you, Yakupo? What happened to you? <sighs> Yakupo. What happened to you? Oh god. I agree, Ji Chan. Morgana Yakupo, I think, might be the second best ship uh, in this whole game. I think so. I really like this, this ship now. Holy fuck. Amazing shipping material. He is way less of a dick in this timeline. I agree. Okay. Okay. She gave a sheepish, sheepish nod. Oh, sorry. She gave a sheepish nod. Which was honestly kind of cute. And of course I couldn't say that. Or she kicked my ass. So I shrugged my shoulders. Made an exasperation. And then turned to leave. <laughs> Once I might have offered to accompany her back to the brothel. But Maguana never seemed keen on the idea of walking anywhere with me. <laughs> Maybe she was afraid of grown men. After what had happened to her at the Lord's Manor. 
Or maybe she just didn't want me to be seen with someone who looked like her. So, hey, uh... I thought you were leaving. One day, I'll show you the world. Oh my god! 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 I don't know. I think Jacopo is like a teenager here. Uh, David, I think he's like a teenager. He's older than her by a few years, but... Oh my god. <sighs> this is just... This hurts. This hurts. Oh god. <sighs> yep, it was Aladdin. Yep. I am just, I am just, you know, I'm just thinking of that scene from Aladdin. Yeah. I know Morgana is 12 and Jacopo is probably a little older than that. I assume, I think he's like 16 or something. At least he, he looked like a, a young teenager from the art. Oh, I won't get my hopes up. Get your hopes up, damn it! Oh, get your hopes up, damn it! I said with a soft chuckle, and then I took my leave. I had every intention of making good on that promise. And I had more than enough reason to believe I could. Three years back, there was a slave revolt at the Lord's Manor. That's not quite accurate, though. Because while I was partly responsible for it inciting the riot, I wasn't actually a slave. A local lord was spoken of, in whispers, as the second coming of the great tyrant of old. The people were constantly grumbling about how he seemed to treat the land like his own personal playground. Exploiting everything and everyone for in it, on it for his own amusement. When enough stress and resentment builds up in a confined space, bada bing. And all it takes is a little shove from the outside to... And that was our plan. Me and a number of other dissatisfied citizens, as you might say, gathered together to pop that bubble and give the Lord a taste of how we felt about him. Oh my god, so he was a fake slave! Wow! Oh my god! He was a spy pretending to be a slave! Holy shit! With the help of a slave trader, I infiltrated the Lord's manor. I'd known slaves weren't trade as well, but Seeing it for myself, I thought most of these people would have been happy having been born as a dog or a cat, and known by someone who actually had a heart. It was revolting, a flagrant injustice. Broadly speaking, there were two types of people who see injustice in the world. The voice of those who have everything, who sit unchallenged at the top of the world looking down on the less fortunate with pity. The second of those with nothing. I wish to overthrow the entire system, keeping them down. Hell the fuck yeah! As you come, it's no surprise that I fell in the second camp. Once I was inside, I ran around the manor telling all the slaves about a plan. Most of them had long since lost the will to fight. But with enough assurance, there were people on the outside ready and waiting to help. Glimmers of hope started to return to their eyes. Finding out they weren't alone. They weren't helpless anymore. Had been an incredible effect on their morale. And once the slaves were convinced, the revolt began. 
It ended up being much larger in scale than I had imagined, and many lost their lives in the process, but the majority of them managed to escape. Naturally, the slaves couldn't stay in the city, so I directed them to people waiting outside, who would take them to another city or neighboring country. I had neither the money nor the power to guarantee them a good life on the outside. But that hardly mattered to them. Everyone was so sure that wherever they ended up would be better than staying, and I prayed that would be the case. It was during the revolt that I saved Morgana. I would have sent her off somewhere else like all the other slaves, but she was in so dire a condition that when I found her, she could hardly even move on her own. She had been sapped of all of her willpower. So I brought her to the brothel where a friend of mine waked and asked her to take Morgana in. My companions and I reveled in the revolt's success. It wasn't enough of an accomplishment to have any real political implications. But we still felt like goddamn heroes. Drunk on victory? We started talking about going bigger. Starting the full-on revolution. Once the elation passed, though, we realized there wasn't much more we could do. Even if we did manage to start a large enough uprising to kill the Lord, we were only peasants. Not only did we not know the first thing about ruling, the other counts would never acknowledge our authority anyway. So he's going to have to be sneaky about it, I see. We pretend to be in control until the next in line showed up, and that'll be end of the end of that. So we just ended up sitting on our thumbs. No way to do anything about our discontent. Skip forward about to just about a month before Morgana's birthday. One day, a middle-aged woman approached me. Oh my god, is that his mom? I didn't... Yeah, middle-aged, yeah. See, like... So he's like probably a young teenager. If his mother is middle-aged. I had never met her before, but she had wavy hair that reminded me a great deal of my own. Looking at me straight in the eye, the woman said, Oh my god! Oh my god! He's an illegitimate child of the Lord! Oh my god! Okay, OA. Have a good time. I'll see you later. I was once a maid servant for the Barnier estate. They've done their best to keep it secret, but I had a child with the previous lord. And that child is you. The revelation came completely out of the blue. According to her, I had royal blood, and if we could convince the Lord of that, I would become royalty. Furthermore, she, as my alleged mother, could return to her old life at the manor. The woman urged me to take action. To meet the Lord, reveal my lineage, and claim, no, reclaim my rightful place at the Barnier House. I would no longer be a poor peasant, peasant living in the slums. Slums. I would have a comfortable life. I obviously wasn't going to agree on the spot. That story was so blatantly dubious, I needed some time to think on it. If she was telling the truth, though... It could transform our revolution from a dream into reality. We wouldn't be restricted to inciting inconsequential uprisings. I could seize power legitimately and make some actual change. So I asked the woman to give me some time to consider. Wait. 
Wait, who's talking? Okay. Have you decided what you're going to give her? That was the very first thing I heard when I stepped through the back door of the problem. Oh, okay, that's Maria. God, okay. Have y'all decided what you're going to give her? Maria, a short, blonde-haired prostitute and good friend of mine, flashed me a devilish smoke. I bought a necklace, as per your suggestion. Girls appreciate that sort of thing, don't they? Almost do, sugar. Me, I've got a taste for knives and other such pointy things. I doubt she has much interest in those, though. Sometimes I wonder if you're actually a goyle. God damn it, Yakupo. Two, twi two lifetimes. God damn it. Anyone could see that Maria and I were close, but our relationship was strictly platonic. Of course, given her line of work, it was unavoidable that people thought otherwise. And honestly, oh, and honestly, it irritated me every time someone suggested we were anything more than friends. People have this annoying, short-sighted tendency to assume that just because a guy and a girl are friendly, they must be intimate. It didn't matter that she was a girl. I only thought of her as a friend. And as best as I could tell, that's all she thought of me as well. Interesting. Now, we know that from Yakupo's side, but from, from what we learned in the third door, I don't think that was how Maria felt. I don't think she felt the same way. Maria and I first met when we were children. Even at that age, she was already a prostitute. Myself a petty thief. We were both incredibly lucky to have survived to adulthood with only ourselves to watch each other's backs. It's possible the only reason neither of us maintained the willpower to survive this long was because we had each other to bitch about life to when things got bad. So, is today the day? Are y'all finally gonna tell her how you feel? Excuse me? Tell her how I what? Oh, don't be coy, sugar. Y'all know exactly what. It's about time y'all manned up and told her. I think you had a better, got a better chance than you think. Do I need to remind you how old she is? Twelve as of today. Practically an adult. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, Maria! Oh my god! Oh my god, no! No! <laughs> I'm gonna have to read that, aren't I? I was knee deep in dick at that age. Yep, that's a line. Oh my god. <laughs> You're comparing to you? Well, the longer you hold, hold off saying something, the more difficult it becomes, sugar. Oh god. Oh god. Hello, Aki. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Break a leg. Party's gonna be in the back, so there won't be any customers around to interfere. Uh, all right. I chewed over when Maria had said I watched her disappear down a brother corridor. Corridor. She wasn't wrong. She wasn't overanalyzing. I didn't indeed have special feelings for Magana. Women seem to have this strange, somewhat terrifying ability to read people's minds. And Maria was a prime example of that. I'd never once much, uh, so much as suggested to anyone I might have think anything of Morgana. But Maria had somehow managed to pick up on it almost immediately. Fortunately, she didn't seem particularly bothered by the fact. No, if anyone else would have found out, I could only imagine the looks I would get. Holy shit! Oh god! 
Oh god! I- Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Okay. Oh god. Oh... God. Okay. I take it- Yeah. I take it back! I take it back. I take it back. I take it back. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. FBI open up! Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. God damn it. Oh god. Oh god. Ugh. I think we're gone to 12, but it was 32. That wasn't normal. I never held anyone this way with anyone else that young either. Any other girl from Morgana's age just looked like another kid to me. So why was she any different? She was covered in scars and other, other time we met. She would tell me to go to hell and she refused to walk in here with me. And no matter how much ice I broke, I could never seem to get all the way through. Oh god. Yet still the world felt like it was just a little bit better place when I was with her. It made me want to see her smile no matter how grotesque her face. How would I even go about saying it, assuming I actually did? Even if your face still isn't healed in four years, I'll take you as my lifetime partner, Morgana. God, no, that's terrible. There has to be a better way to put it. Damn. Oh, God. All the goodwill. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now I was getting stressed out, and it was all thanks to Maria. This is supposed to be a day of celebration, not of fretting over stupid personal matters. Not long after we arrived at the brothel and made my way up to the back room, Maria and a handful of other unoccupied girls showed up. Maria Morgana was supposed to be the guest of honor. I was even more reticent than usual. The prostitutes chatted among themselves about work in unabashedly graphic detail, trading info on which customers were good and which customers were bad. All the while, Morgana looking incredibly uncomfortable. She's not the only one! You guys think you can maybe change the subject? Like we have anything else to talk about. Making the birthday girl one hide in the corner defeats the whole purpose, don't you think? Oh no, don't mind me. I don't have anything I want to talk about. Morgana said in almost a whisper, her head downturned. At least eat something then. The cookies are barely sweetened and dry as rocks, but they're edible. Yakupo, you little bitch. You got some so stones to sit talk my cookies to my face. <laughs> Stop it, Maria. Stop throwing things at me. <laughs> the other girls cackled as Maria and I bickered. God damn it, why? Why? Just fucking why? Fucking hell! Jesus Christ. <sighs> Hoping I might have elicited a reaction from Morgana as well, I snuck a glance over at her, but she remained expressionless. You and me both, Chi Chan, you and me both. You are right about one thing, though. This is Morgana's day, so let's change the subject. Maria said with a little laugh, having hurled everything within arm's reach at me. Like I said, I don't have anything to talk about. She 
Sure you do. You just have to look a little harder. Not saying after a minute for us. It can be anything. Uh, let's see. Here's an idea. Are there any guys you got your eyes on? I seed my tea all over the table. There is. And then I started choking. What? Seriously? Holy shit. Who is it? Tell me who's the lucky guy. God. <laughs> okay. Everyone fell silent. Maria gave me a sympathetic look. I knew exactly what she wanted to say. Sorry, kid, you ain't got nothing on God. Asshole. If you're gonna dream, dream big, right? Yeah, I get where you're coming from. Finding after the all-powerful, all-knowing God. I'm with you. You fall face liar. The grass may be a hell of a lot greener up there, but it's a bit far, don't you think? You better off settling for the weeds down here. Is she just implying I'm a weed? Mari looked over and gave a, gave a wide, wide grin at the sight of me grinding my teeth and continued. Say, the young man over. Wait, stop right there! Don't say another word. FBI, open up! <laughs> Whoopsie, me and my big mouth. I almost did my, your job for you. Damn it, Maria. This was not good. Like hell was I going to let her corner me into saying it here. I stole against Morgana, but her gaze was locked onto her knees. I couldn't see what, if any kind of reaction she was having. I, uh, Morgana, what she was trying to say is... Is that I am, I... I have to go. What? I have to go to the bathroom. Sure. Morgana got, for, got from her chair and left the room in silence. I imagine I was thinking a rather flaccid expression, because as soon as Morgana was gone, Maria began, ca began cackling like a madwoman. My reply was the nearest object, courtesy of my, thro courtesy, courtesy of my throwing arm. Loser. How hard is it to just say it? It would have been easier if you hadn't cornered me like that. <laughs> Oh, God, Maria. Oh, God. You think I'd believe you if you had done it? Think you, th you think I'd believe you would have done it without a little nudge? I, I would have. Eventually. Eventually, you're going to cut it. Now's the right time. And don't worry, me and the girls won't make fun of you for getting your box off. So little oh, my God. That's not the reason I'd like her. Besides, I, I would wait at least four years before. Oh, thank God. Seriously, just, just, oh, God. Uh, thank heaven for small miracles. Doesn't mean you can't tell her now. I think I do her wonders, really. She's, well, you know. So I think knowing someone cares about her light, light in the loan of it. When she comes back. Give her the necklace and tell her how you feel. And if she turns you down, we can all have a good laugh about it. <laughs> Maria and a few other girls chuckled. As uncomfortable as she was making me feel, she had a point. Regardless of whether Morgana reciprocated my feelings or not, there was a good chance that just putting them out there would help her in breaking down the walls she had built in her heart. And maybe one day, I would actually be able to see her smile. I'll do it, I'll tell her. It didn't matter if I came out looking like a loser. It didn't matter if Morgana wasn't interested in me that way. What matters is she knew someone accepted her, regardless of her appearance or the things she had been through. And if by some chance there really was royal blood flowing through my veins, and I could make good on my promise to show her the world. I could put an end to her life of poverty and abuse. A place that was one of comfort and wealth. I could buy her even better medicine. Something that could actually heal her face. If I truly were royalty, I could do so much more for her. Makes it sound like I want to be some kind of fairy tale hero or something. 
But honestly, I wouldn't have minded that if I was going to make her happy to wipe away all her past misfortune. Why couldn't I make it a little dramatic? It wasn't usually my style, but in this case, I wouldn't have objected to the story of a ending. Ever. This, though. No, this wasn't the kind of story I was hoping for. The heavy curtains separating the guest rooms had been torn to shreds. And they were splattered with blood. A man, apparently caught without enough time to defend himself, lay splayed out naked on a bed, his empty eyes fixated on the ceilings. Ceiling. The whole area reeked of blood. All I could do was stare stupefied at the carnage. What the hell? Why? How could this happen? My dumbfounded muttering went unanswered, though. If you were still alive, could no better make sense of the incomprehensible massacre than me. The sudden, arbitrary upheaval of our world. The inexplicable, inescapable reality. Shortly after Morgana stepped out, I heard a woman scream from the front of the brothel. Next, a man shouting. At first, I assumed it was one of the customers losing his temper over something. But the tone of the scream seemed somehow off for something like that. It wasn't long before the noise had escalated to alarming levels, so I dashed towards the source of the shouting. A good dozen men, bandits, or maybe thieves, they seem more organized, had raided the brothel. They slaughtered all the customers, stripping of any valuables. And they tied up the girls, killing any who resisted. The first thought that rose to my panic mind was that I need to find Morgana. I need to get her out of here no matter what. I couldn't let her birthday turn into a tragedy. She had already been through enough and I had to make sure she didn't suffer any further. I had to make her life into something good. I searched and I searched, but there was no sign of Morgana anywhere. Until suddenly, something seemed to crash into me from behind, causing me to stagger. It took a few seconds for the pain to set in, which is when I looked down to see the tip of a blade sticking out of my gut. Oh my god. Blood streamed along the metal surface, and there were little bits of flesh caught on the edges. I turned around just in time to see the man holding it kick me away. And before I had time to process what was happening, I hit the floor and lost consciousness. Yeah, I agree, Ji Chan. Aside from the ugh parts of this, he really, yeah, he had some kind of empathy before. <sighs> Damn. I, I got kind of the wind knocked out of my sails with that. Sorry if um, that affected the let's play in any way. I'm just... <sighs> ugh, ugh. I hit the floor and lost consciousness. If I were a hero... I could have surely eradicated all the violent intruders in the blink of an eye, saving everyone. Protected that which I wanted to protect. Not had to lose anything, but I, I was just, I was a mere boy, a weak boy, not helpless against a few robbers, a useless boy unable to protect anyone. When I woke up, Mario was kneeling over me, sobbing. No sign of the tough, foul-mouthed girl I knew. Aside from her, there were two other girls, 
also crying, leaving only four survivors. Apparently I wasn't dead. Looking down, I saw my bare stomach wrapped in blood-soaked bandages. The brothel lay in ruins, a bloody pile of torn bedding, clothes, and bodies. I made my way back to the front, and all I could do was stare stupefied at the carnage. What the hell? Why? How could this happen? My dumbfounded muttering went unanswered, though. Maria stood beside me, quietly rubbing her trembling arms. Where's Morgana? I couldn't find her. Why not? I'm sorry I looked everywhere, but I couldn't find her. I'm so sorry. I wanted to say I wasn't blaming her, but I couldn't find the words. If I'd had power, I could just prevented this from happening. What kind of power would I have needed, though? The physical strength to overpower the thieves? No, I needed to think bigger. If I weren't a peasant, with someone of real influence and import, no one would dare stand up to me. No petty thieves would ever even consider a raid on me. And I would have had the power to punish anyone who tried. But regardless, this would never have happened at all. I was supposed to give Morgana a good life, to show her the world, to make her smile. If only I had power, absolute unflinching power. If I had climbed to the top of the ladder when the chance was offered to me, this all could have been avoided. If only I had asserted my place as royalty a month earlier, as the woman who claimed to be my mother had urged me to. I wanted power. The power to keep everything I cared about safe. The power to change this damn world. The power to stop those filthy thieves. The power to keep her by my side. I wanted power. I heard about the attack on the brothel and that you were hurt. I'm so glad to see you're well. About a week after the raid, I went to see the woman who professed herself to, as my, my mother. As you would expect of someone who had served at the old Lord's Manor, she was very elegant and graceful. The shack where she stayed, though, was a shabby drab place with bare, with bare wattle and, and daub walls. You were concerned about my safety? Of course. Show me a mother who is not always concerned about her child's safety. <laughs> Says the woman I'd never seen until a month ago. Physical distance has no bearing on a mother's love. She said with a soft smile. Age had clearly begun taking its toll on her, but I could see hints of her former beauty. If you had gone to speak with the Lord and reveal your lineage when I first came to see you, you would have never been in that kind of danger. There is still time. Go to the Lord's Manor. Show him. I'm not really your son, am I? The woman fell silent for a moment, observing me. Oh, God. I could see the resemblance between us, yes. And I had no memories of my mother. It would be nice if she were to show back up someday. 
but it just wasn't likely. The whole thing felt extremely contrived. Discussions will progress much smoother if we both know what the other wants out of this arrangement. Start by telling me who you really are. Were you actually a maidservant for the previous lord? She gave a nod, then walked over to a grimy shelf and retrieved a ring that looked very much out of place. It was made of gold, engraved with an elaborate insignia. Look at this. It's the Barnier family crest. The previous lord gave me the ring as a gift, and I've kept it ever since. Even after our relationship was discovered, I was chased out. I didn't sell it, because I knew I was with child. They will have no choice but to acknowledge you as a legitimate heir if you show them this ring. Why did you wait so long to confine me then? I was afraid they might kill you if I brought it. you in as a baby. Why were we separated? Misfortune. One day bandits came and kidnapped you. Presumably, they were hired by the Barnier estate because they didn't want your existence coming to light. I consider it a miracle you're still alive. I can only imagine the stern look on my face as I listen to this woman speak. Part of me did indeed want to take everything she said as true. Wanted to believe I was someone important. But I couldn't convince myself I had anything other than a commoner's blood running through my veins. It would appear you've done your research. I don't have any other family to the best of my knowledge which does indeed make me a good candidate for you to step in and claim your stake on. If I were to guess, your child with the Lord has either passed away or never existed at all. It's probably true that you worked at the Barnier's Manor, and it's probably true that you had relations with the former lord. You were chased out, and now you live in proper poverty. You want me? To, you want to go back to your former, more comfortable life, and while you're at it, take vengeance on the current lord? But being a woman, you have no means to accomplish that yourself. So you came up with the idea of using a fake son. If your child were still alive, he would be right around my age, wouldn't he? And we look similar enough for you to convincingly claim we're related. But the biggest reason you chose me is because I've made something of a name for myself. Because I was one of the people involved in inciting the revol revolt three years ago. The perfect choice to spearhead a revolution. How dramatic. The man who set the Lord's slaves free, free was secretly his family. The people would eat it right up.
so. How far off am I? That is true, Chi Chan. It reminds me of uh yeah, that's like kind of like Eva and George in that in that respect. Like she's using him like uh, you know, to 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 for uh for power because she's unable to because of societal conventions. That is really interesting. For some time the woman sat in silence. Eventually she broke it. Not by yelling in anger or desperately trying to refute me, but with a smile. I knew very well what lurked behind that smile, too. Scorn. You're sharp for a filthy peasant. It would seem I chose wisely. I was right. She was a manipulative, conniving shyster. But that, that I could work with. That fits so much better. I wasn't royalty. I wasn't a hero. I was a filthy peasant. I'm in. The first thing I did after agreeing to work with the woman was not to approach the Lord, but to reveal my false lineage to my accomplices. They all thought I was joking until I showed them the ring. The one ring to rule them all, quite literally in this case. <laughs> then their dreams of revolution started seeming far more realistic. Mario was the one exception. God damn it, if Yakupo were six years younger, ah, oh, jeez. I would be all, uh, all on this. <laughs> Mario was the one exception. Not only did she not believe me, she tried to stop me from going through with this game. Haven't you had enough danger for one life? Come on, forget about all this revolution stuff. We can build up a new brothel and just stay low for the rest of our days. Does that really sound so bad? You're the only friend I've got left, Yakupo. She said somewhat desperately. I sympathized with her concerns, but didn't want to let this chance to gain some real power slip away. I was done having these things taken away from me. Hear me, my fellow citizens, who live in suffering at the hands of your supposed lord. Within me flows the, the blood of the previous lord. I am the rightful heir. Behold, the Barnier's golden ring! Proof that I am of noble birth. Victims of this terrible tyrant, the time has come to start anew. And I shall be the one to lead you down that path. The poor, the hungry, the deprived. All of you, stand with me! My call to arms stoked the flames in the people's hearts. When the assault on the Lord's Manor began, they were an inferno of righteous justice. No one was thinking straight. I was about the only one with something resembling a clear head amidst the chaos. If I really were a hero, then I would have rejoiced in that glorious day, the, that momentous turning point in the city's history. I would have been honored to have led the, have led the charge. But this was all about one woman's avarice and desire for revenge. This was all about one man's lamentation of his own weakness. I wasn't motivated by any desire to help these people.
The Lord, backed into a quarter, begged for his life. I decapitated him, then held his separate head, separate head up with the people. I gotta say, that's pretty goddamn badass. <sighs> Their cheers and shouts filled the air. As I watched them rejoice, I wondered, was this the future that awaited me? Would the people come after me next? Was my head going to be in one of their hands one day? The king and the other counts acknowledged my royalty. That was less because I had the Barney's ring and more because they thought that they were the best way to prevent things from getting any messier. So with their approval, I formally became the Lord of the Land. Oh my god! I also assumed the former Lord's name, because despite his reputation with his people, it was a name people knew, and one that held far more clout than my own. Just like that, my long-time dream of power had come true. That said, simply becoming the Lord didn't mean everything had fallen neatly into place. Many of the local noble families accused me of acquiring my rank illegitimately. They waited fangs bare for me to slip up. They even tried to set me up on more than one occasion. I couldn't trust anyone. Oh god, here we go. Here's the beginning of it. On top of that, if I took too long making the improvements I had promised the people, they would start saying I was just as much of a tyrant as the previous lord. There was only so much I could do at once, though. Especially with my hands so full fending off the vulturous nobles. Exhaustion soon began to set in. This wasn't the world I was looking for. The one I wanted to show Morgana. Really, Apparition? Well, that's lovely. That would be perfect. Thank you for that, Apparition. By the way, Apparition, how, how much would you say um, I have left in the story after this section? Because if he gets Jacopo on his side with this, I can't imagine there being too much left. Like after, uh, you know, we get to the day she should supposedly die and a big finale. I don't want spoilers. I, I just I just would like to know roughly how much you think there's left. It was day after draining day of betrayal, constantly having to look over my shoulder, fighting to meet unrealistic expectations. I was starting to lose sight of who I was as a person. I couldn't let anyone see me looking weak. They would see it as an opportunity to take advantage of me. Two or three more streams? Thank you, Aki. Okay, so we're almost to the end. Okay. I thought so. I thought so. I 
couldn't let anyone see me looking weak. They would see it as an opportunity to take advantage of me. To manipulate me. That's right, Ji Chan. You managed to catch us at the very end. To eliminate me. I needed power to protect myself from those people. Attaining rank was only the first step. I needed even more power. Oh, God. No, he's becoming power hungry. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Enough to ensure no one would ever be giving me orders. Could ever play me for a fool. I turned my attention first to bolster bolstering the economy. I provided substitutes to merchants in the city. I expanded trade routes. I made it known that people of any skin color, even those not welcome in other territories, were welcome in my land. Trying to bring some vitality into the city. Oh, wow. That sure is nice of him. Oh, God. Jeez. My God, Yakovo is such a conflicting character. Like, he has so much bad and so much good in him. It's crazy. The previous lord had evidently left to throw parties, squandering away nearly all the tax money on his own entertainment. Jesus Christ. If he had left me more to work with, I would have used it to clean up and repair the slums. But for the time being, that had to remain another item on the checklist. I needed more money flowing through the city as a whole before I could make any headway on fixing up the poor areas. Helping the people who needed it most quickly became a secondary objective. I had a pretty good idea what my former accomplices still in the slums were saying about me. He used us. I could practically hear them whispering. Some of them even started publicly slandering me in an attempt to undermine my authority. Claiming I wasn't suited to be in a position of power because I had spent most of my life in the slums. It wasn't long before they, could, they had convinced the people I was just another tyrant. I had hoped that they, if no one else, would have sympathized with my position. Realized that I, that I had every intention of helping them. And that I simply didn't have the resources for it yet. Jacopo, you have this thing of not communicating what you're thinking. Oh, God, jeez. Jacopo does not communicate what he thinks very well to the people he needs to, to hear it. But no one saw what I was doing. No one believed me even when I tried to explain. In one case, I invited an old companion to my manor to discuss matters. But the meeting only turned into an attempt on my life. Having absolutely no one I could trust, no one I could call an ally, hit me a lot harder than I expected. It twisted my worldview beyond recognition. I had no need for sympathy. I couldn't show care for anyone. Otherwise, someone would inevitably use it against me. Old friends and strangers alike. 
In fact, those who knew me best. Those who were aware of where I had come from and what I had been before. Were the ones who fought hardest to tear me down. Rules needed to be created. Punishments established. I couldn't allow anyone to take this power from me. Anyone who so much as suggested I had come from the slums. Anyone who dared disrespect me had to be eliminated. All threats exterminated before they could reach me. Somewhere along the line, I had lost sight of my original dream. Lost all my desire to do right by the people I cared about. Hell, I didn't have anyone to do right by anymore. Why did I need to climb to the top of the ladder? So no one could kill me. Why did I want money? So no one could mock me. Why did I want power? So no one could oppose me. Four years passed. And I found myself in a very, very distant place. Miracle blood? Sounds like a sham to me. You never know. They say the sound of her first cry brought rain to the land where she was born, saving the whole village from drought. And they say her blood has the power to cure any disease. One day, a curious rumor came to my attention. The kind of whispering I wouldn't usually put much stock into. Thank you, apparition. Okay, so it'll be a little over two hours, but that's okay, because I'm feeling pretty awake. And, uh, yeah. And that's just fine with me, although my voice is a little sore from doing all that yelling as Yakovo before. One day, a curious rumor came to my attention. The kind of whispering I wasn't usually put much stock into. It was said that there was a witch living in a cottage by the lake. Few had ever seen her face. But they claimed she had the same voice as a girl who had supposedly performed miracles several years earlier in a faraway village. People love their stories of heroes and miracles. And if I could show some support for the churches, then maybe people would stop complaining I was focusing too much on the economy. So I devised a plot to capture the witch and make use of her miracle blood. would establish a new church, have it being run by a nun in the city had been fawning the city had been fawning over for some time. They called her the Saintess. There I would take the witch's blood and call it a miracle medicine, distributing it in exchange for tithes, which the people would certainly come for in droves. And if the blood somehow didn't happen to have special powers, then that would make the scheme that much more effective.
I'll worry about the veracity of the rumors later. Right now, all I want is for you to capture her and bring her to me. I was too busy to handle capturing the witch myself. So I went and found someone to handle it for me. He was a former slave who had several years back massacred an entire carriage of slaves and the slave traders transporting them. Obviously not an upstanding citizen, but there was little doubt he would have any trouble apprehending a single witch. The biggest reason I chose him, though, was because he was enamored with the nun. I honestly thought it was rather hilarious, a murderer falling in love with a nun. I had been expecting the man to object, but he agreed almost without hesitation. There was a mansion on the outskirts of the city that the previous lord had built for himself and had gone unused since his death. It was there I decided to keep the witch and it was there I decided to establish the church. The nun would have ample space there to provide temporary shelter to the sick and needy. I thought, with what little remained of my conscience, that I was doing the right thing. If one witch, probably an old woman at that. So, he's wrong there! Was all it cost to accomplish such good, then a worthy sacrifice it was. In an ideal world, it wouldn't matter young or old. A human being was an unacceptable price for anything. But this was far from an ideal world. So I decided that taking what little remained of this woman's life was the best. No, the only acceptable course of action. She would probably despise me for it. but I would gladly accept her hatred in exchange for the benefits her blood would bring to the city. <sighs> it's our responsibility to offer a helping hand to the sick and poor to pray for the abandoned souls. Morgana's words from years back popped into my head. I believe that as an aggressive, self-centered, and utterly lacking in compassion as my methods have been, I was following that mantra. I was offering a helping hand to the people who need it in the only way I knew how. I wasn't so dense as to think she would approve. She would approve of making of me making an old woman pay the price for my charity, though. Doing this may be no better than a thug, but everything has a price. For every extravagant feast held, a dozen people go the night without food. That's simply the way of the world. I was no god. I was no saint. I had blood on my hands. I was a villain. I knew no way to accomplish good without doing bad. After the swordsman departed, I took some time to myself. I filled a goblet with water, smelled it, then gave a bit of it to my pet dog before gulping down the rest of it. Are you still out there somewhere, Morgana? What would you think of me if you saw what I had become? Here we go. 
Oh boy, several days later than originally planned, the swordsman finally arrived at the mansion. I had chosen the observation tower on the grounds for the witch's prison, and it was there I waited for him. He showed up with a burlap sack swung over his shoulder, setting it down on the ground and saying, There's your witch. Oh god. Okay, I, I need to get some water. I'm so sorry, you guys. My throat is cracking. But I still want to, I do want to finish this section and I'm not tired. I, I, I just need to get some water. Oh god, dude. Actually, I do need a bit of a bathroom break as well. Sorry, I will. I will be back. Please, <laughs> so hold on a bit more. Ah, uh, here we go, okay. <laughs> Hold on, see. <clears throat> there are these lovely little um, things in the, I don't, in the supermarket called uh, Voost. And they're these little capsules that um, you can put in water and they're like vitamin stuff, but it tastes so good. Like, my doctor told me I needed some more vitamin D, and I got the vitamin D flavor, and it's basically, if you put it in water and a little ice, it's basically like a soda. It tastes so good. C. 
Seriously. God. They're in the health aisle. It's called Voost. V-O-O-S-T. Yeah, that, it's crazy. Now, I didn't need a coffee because I'm not tired, so. And my throat is still raspy. God damn it. <laughs> Alright, let's get back to the story. I could only hear muffled grunting from inside the sack. Oh God. But it didn't sound like an old woman inside. The man's clothes in the bag both reeked of blood. Tell me you didn't harm her, dog. We smell blood. You only instructed me not to kill her. Mistakes were made, limbs were lost. Jesus Christ! When Yukimasa is in bestia mode, he does not hold back. Oh God, he really does need a tether. Somebody just remind him of his own humanity. Clean up all the blood I got on me. No one suspected anything. Oh, God. That you were able to immediately recognize it as the smell of blood. Says quite a bit, Lord. Oh, come on! Now that's kind of bullshit. Anybody, everybody knows the smell of blood. Especially someone who grows up in the slums. Like, you'd, you'd definitely get your own share of scrapes and cuts and bruises. And you know what blood smells like and, and tastes like. Because you your, if your finger gets cut, you're going to put your finger in your mouth. Like, seriously. <laughs> you have killed before, haven't you? Enough yapping. She is alive, yes? Of course. That is true. He doesn't know that he's from the slums. Yukimasa doesn't know that. Yeah, that is true. I felt a tinge of guilt for this woman. But it didn't last long. He never saw her! Oh my god! He never saw her! Well, not, not at this point, anyway. Oh my god. Her role in my scheme... And the fate that awaited her was the same regardless of the condition she arrived in. I tossed my gaze from the man to the bag. He crouched down to untie it. Here we go. Oh, God. Revealing. A young girl with one arm severed. As soon as I saw her, I knew exactly who the girl was. But why? What, what was she doing in the bag? Why was she the late Sut Lakeside witch? What was she doing here? Why was she so pale and shaking? Why did I order her captured? How could I have done that? Yeah. Yeah, you idiot moron asshole. Fucking hell. How could I have let this happen to her? Morgana. My voice was hoarse and rattling. She looked up at me, 
her face just as disfigured and hideous as it had been four years before. My mind flashed back to her birthday. Oh, hello, OA, I see you're back. That's so cool. Welcome back, OA. My mind flashed back to her birthday, to when I considered offering her to take my life as my lifetime partner if her face hadn't healed in four years' time. Is that you? Her question yanked me out of my memories. You, you remember me? Did Morgana remember me? The three years we had spent together. What kind of person I had been. The boy had refused to give up putting ointment on her face. Those horribly unromantic encounters at the graveyard. Her taking shots at me. Me taking shots at her. All that time we had shared. Oh God, how could I ever forget? Morgana, she remembered me? How could I ever forget all the pain and humiliation you put me through? Here we go. Oh, God. Yup, and here is her thinking of him as the old lord. How could I ever forget the blood sabbaths you so loved to hold? What? What was she talking about? Haven't had enough, have you? Leaving scars on every inch of my body wasn't enough for you? You haven't had your fill of my blood? No, that wasn't me. I... I was the one who tried to heal those wounds. You're the man who had bound me, cut me up, called me a witch, and then tried to kill me! I haven't forgotten you even for a moment. No, Morgana. I was the man who rescued you from him. I don't care how much my father preaches forgiveness. That's the one thing you'll never get from me. I despise you with all my soul. I revile you with every fiber of my being. For every scar you gave me, I give you a lifetime of hatred. No, Morgana. I was not aware you knew the witch, Lord. His voice made my bread run, blood run cold. Oh, God. I didn't just know her. Morgana was. This man, the Lord, he destroyed me, mind and body. No, that was another man. He was already dead. I had just taken his place. I'd come from the slums. I'd been part of the slaves' revolt. I knew I had to tell her. He ruined my life. But between the stings of Morgana's accusations and my need to protect my current position, I couldn't muster the strength to do it. If someone were to find out it wasn't legitimate royalty, that I had come from the slums, that everything I'd worked so hard to build up, to build up for who, though, would come crumbling down. Do I really think it hadn't already? My God. His story just repeated. Holy shit. He had the same life story. And by the way, do you all remember what Maria was, going, was coming to do? When we first met her in this timeline, she was coming to kill him. And I'll bet the same, if Michelle wasn't there, the same thing would have happened. All I had left was my power, my rank. Is that what I actually wanted? I couldn't afford to lose that too. When did I... 
When did I first start straying from the path? Yes, I know her. Or I knew her years ago. I see. What do you want to do then, Lord? You look sick. This doesn't change anything. If we lock the witch up and proceed as planned. Why couldn't I tell her the truth? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> how? How could I keep her imprisoned? What? What had I wanted power for in the first place? Would anyone ever believe me if I said this wasn't how I wanted things to turn out? Apparition, is, is this the place or is it a bit further than this? Before me floats a man, twisted and writhing in pain. Although, whether what I'm looking at could be said to resemble human is a difficult question. It's a hazy, indistinct shape. Okay, thanks, apparition. On the precipice of being consumed by darkness everlasting. Oh, we're very close to the end, then. I know very well what I'm looking at. The moments before a man's soul shatters. Did I do the same thing to him that Morgana did to me? Was it I who summoned the darkness? Who laid his past bare? Who forced him to relive those events? To experience once more everything he felt? Everything he thought? Holy shit. Yeah, Michelle has gotten some kind of powers. Who put him through that despair a second time? I can only imagine. How much he must have, how he must have felt, causing someone he once cared for so much pain. The things he did are abhorrent, absolutely, more than deserving of reproach, and it would undoubtedly be easier for him to simply vanish into the eternal abyss. But I can't allow that to happen. He still has work to do, yep. His story is essential. It's almost certain Morgana still doesn't know who he really is. He needs to face her, to reveal the truth with his own words. That's the only way we're going to get to have a change of heart. That's not all he has to say to her either. So I must bring him back, pull him out of the darkness. I grab the man by the arm and begin scouring the blackness for an exit. After some time, I see a speck glistening high above, so I make my way upwards, back into the harsh light of the real world. Okay, here we go. And uh, this is where we will stop. For now. Oh my God, there's so many save files, jeez. Yup. So, um, let's see. God damn, my voice. Today is Tuesday. Well, Monday, but yeah. So, tomorrow is more Higurashi. And uh, we are going to continue this on Thursday. 
And it looks like we are approaching the end of Vada Vod Morgana. This is an incredible story. Yeah, I gotta rest my voice a bit. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow a bit more Higurashi and then a day to rest my voice because God only knows I need it. Cheers. <laughs> You guys are amazing, seriously. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this. I can't wait. Oh, by the way, uh, before I go, um, I'm going to be putting a poll up next time, deciding whether uh, two things. Um, I wanted to do something special for uh, Chaos Head before I jump into that, so that Let's Play is going to be delayed a little bit. It won't be the next one after this. But don't worry, I am absolutely 100% still doing it. And, um... So, I want your opinion on something. After Fata Morgana, would you like me to jump right into Fata Morgana Requiem, which is much shorter than the regular Fata Morgana. It's about a third as long. And, um... Is a kind of prequel or sequel? I'm not sure. Or, do you want me to go to Seabed? Which is another visual novel that I've been told is really good and have been dying to play. It's between those two. So, um, yeah, I'm going to put that poll up next time. Uh, I think on the Discord, next time I, um, uh, I do Fata Morgana. Okay? So, until, until next time, I will say, so long. Farewell, I'm going to say goodnight. You are all the sweetest of hearts. See ya. <laughs>